Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Boozer here. Thanks for stopping by. So, um, I've been kind of dreading making a video on this topic, mainly because it's, uh, I can't really find a way to do it thoroughly and properly uh, in a um, nice viewing format. But basically in this video, I'm going to be doing a gear cleanse on my account. Um, I get a lot of comments about uh, people wanting some direction on how to do this, but mainly it's a lot of it has to do on your own account and your uh, how where you are in the game, what your current gaming situation is. Um, so anyways, I'm going to go over all of that in this video. So let's jump right into it. All right. So I'm on my main account today. So the reason why I kind of dread uh, these gear cleanse videos is because they are exceptionally long. And like I said, there's a lot of nuances to um, remove to a gear cleansing your account. There's a lot of things that um, you need to know about your own account. Um, and, you know, like I, I know people that uh, give their accounts to be cleansed by other people. Now, if other people don't know your account well or your progress or your gaming situation, basically how often you play, um, they might not be able to do the best job in terms of gear cleansing your account. So I, you know, a little bit of advice is just be careful who's gear cleansing your account because they might not fully understand what they're doing uh, for your account. Um, not to say that people don't know what they're doing, but that's just my two cents. So with that being said, let's jump into what I would do here for my account. So first things first, the easy thing you guys could do to start your gear cleanse is basically go filter. Um, you guys can go to the bottom three rows and then just select the flat stats. So the stats without the percentage stats. So HP, attack, defense. So these pieces of gear are considered poor or unusable. Okay, so you would almost never invest into these pieces of gear. Because they're uh, they don't give you uh, much return on the um, they don't give you as much return as the percentage uh, counterpart. So for example, this one attack flat attack on a glove it's terrible, right? On a glove you always want crit damage, crit rate, HP percentage, um, but we have flat attack here on a set that's just generally bad. But it has triple speed, so I like to keep items that have triple speed or higher mainly because it's very easy to use these kind of junky pieces to finish off builds so for example if you have a team that's kind of unkillable and you need to build a champion that needs to reach like a super high speed but um, you don't want to use any good gear on them so having pieces like this kind of makes sense so i don't mind keeping it right so there's a reason why i'm keeping it there's a reason why it's a level 16 Moving on, shield, same thing here, right? I have a quad speed shield set chest. It's not very good because it's a flat defense chest. You obviously want HP percentage, but because it's a quad speed, it's going to come in handy when um, one of these days when a build needs to be done and I need a big um, speed shield, a big speed shield chest. So I'm going to keep that one as well. This one, this one, I tried to go after the um, mythical uh, speed roll here. It didn't work out, so that's going to be gone. So something like this gets sold. This one, similar idea to the glove. I'm going to keep it because it's a triple. This one, same idea, right? I haven't rolled this up yet, so I'm going to keep it for a roll. This one, this one's gone. This one has no hope, right? This one also has no hope, so it's gone. This one, similar idea. I got triple speed here. It's going to go up to 16, see if I can get a quad, and it's going to happily sit in my account. So stone skin, some of these more special um, special sets you can't really farm too easily. Um, I do like to keep um, some of them for potential ore opportunities. So for example, if I this chest is actually fine because it's a triple speed um, stone skin chest with HP. HP is generally the most probably usable because you're missing out on a couple thousand HP on your support champion, but then you have the big speed roll, right? In a good set. But for example, like this boot, this boot doesn't really have much hope, but it is a mythical boot, six star boot. So I could use an ore on this and hope for something else, for example. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I would keep these ones. Um, impulse, 
I mean, this is an awful chest. It should be instantly sold. However, same mentality, right? This is a set you don't get much of. When I roll is this, when I roll this to 12, I can put an ore on it and hopefully it'll get something better. So I want to keep this just for that opportunity. I might not do that, but since I only have maybe one or two pieces of this set held in my account, I'm going to hold on to this one for now just for that opportunity. Righteous, basically no pieces of this set. However, it is basically a watered down speed set and having a triple speed roll on this glove makes it perfectly viable for me. So I'm going to keep it. Lastly, Merciless. Same idea as what I mentioned with the stone skin uh, set. Merciless, you don't get very often. And I'm probably going to take an ore to this and then just roll it up and see what happens. Maybe I'll get crit damage and then I'll get some good rolls um, and then we'll hold on to it. Otherwise, it's going to go in the bin. Okay. So let's sell these three pieces. All right. So that's the first step that you should do when you're going to sit down and start doing a gear cleanse. All right. The next step. So I'm going to teach you guys how to, to um, what pieces of gear you want to keep and what pieces of gear you want to get rid of. And we're going to do this the uh, nitty gritty old fashioned way. You could set up a cell file in your RSL helper. So RSL helper is a tool. It's like this. It basically has the ability to go into your inventory, sort it out, and then you can basically set up a auto cell feature that uses a file and is can clear out your inventory so here it's going to clear out 446 if i wanted to do that um obviously the file is not foolproof but this is kind of like the new way of doing it very fast and efficient there are some bugginess some bugs about it um, that can be frustrating so anyways that's something else i can leave a link in the description um to help you guys get some more information on how to do that but in this video i'm going to show you guys the nitty-gritty old-fashioned way and try to teach you guys what kind of gear to hold and keep uh as you guys do your cleanse okay so life attack defense these are not very good sets uh you're looking for exceptional pieces i have these pieces for a challenge that i'm doing yeah i know <laughs> Uh, but you're looking for some exceptional pieces, exceptional rolls. So let's see what we got here and for my stash. What do I got here? I got double HP and then single um, single defense with accuracy and speed. I mean, it's a good support piece, but it's not like exceptional. I only have two pieces of this, so I'm, I probably wanted to keep this piece just for um, to complete the set if I ever wanted to use it. However, if I look at this piece... It's an attack percentage boot, so it's a damage boot with a triple crit rate, crit damage, and speed. It's a really good boot for like an off-piece, um, for an off-piece uh, nuker, uh, attack-based nuker. However, obviously, it's a de you know you're not gonna find too much uses for this, and I'm definitely not gonna pair these two together. So here, I'm just gonna sell this piece. And then we're going to be done with it. I'm going to keep this boot because 25 crit rate is pretty nice along with the uh, attack percentage main stat. It could definitely fit on a uh, off piece for a nuker one day. Um, it's a mythical piece as well, so it's pretty good. It's a, definitely the top range of uh, rolls. Okay, so speed set, one of the most important sets uh, you have in the game. So basically for this set, when you're looking towards using this set, uh, you want to make sure you have speed on it. Uh, when you're starting out in the game, you're probably keeping all sorts of speed gear, right? You're keeping five star speed gear, five, um, six star rares, rare speed gear, whatever. But at the end of the day, you want speed, uh, if possible, on your gear pieces. So anything without speed should be handled, um, you know, with more, more uh, harshly, more harshly. Okay, so let's go and see what we got here. So I got a double speed roll here with double HP. I mean, those are good stats. The other stats are not good, but the double HP, double speed are solid. So I'm going to hold on to that. Um, this one, not so good. Pure damage stats, missed a speed roll, but it does have a speed uh, speed uh, substat here. I'm going to hold on to it. It's also not 16 yet. So the 16 could hit a triple triple crit rate, for example. It could get even better. It could work on a damage dealer. Here we have a not so good, um, a worse version of this one, basically. Uh, but it already has a big five star glyph on it. Could be useful, but obviously this one is a better version of it um so not too fussed about holding on to this one 
This one's uh, interesting. It has a triple uh, resistance roll with a max glyph on it. I mean, I don't really like to dump this because I could actually ore this into a triple uh, speed weapon uh, if I was desperate enough. But here, I think I'm kind of okay with just holding on to it, especially since it has a max glyph on it. But of course, you want at least the substat speed and at least some rolls in speed if possible. Uh, this one has a double, has a double max. So 18 is the max for a double roll in the speed. So that's really good. Good to see. That might be like one of my fastest weapons, to be honest, in the speed set. Here, this one is kind of like similar, similar to this one. Both of these are pretty similar, actually, um, in that they have similar stats. This one actually has better stats because of HP percentage versus resistance. But then this one has the glyph on it. So these ones, you technically could get rid of both if you wanted to and then just hope for this one. Uh, but since these ones are already 16 and rolled up, I kind of feel like just holding on to it. Speed set's always good to have a little bit extra because it's a very good set. So these are just like kind of things you want to keep in mind uh, when you're hold when you're trying to get rid of gear. You don't want to get rid of gear kind of blindly, especially if you need to gear up things like faction wars and uh, faction wars champions, and you're still building out your roster and all that stuff. For me, I think a lot of these pieces probably should be gone uh, because I don't need to gear up too many more champions and the champions i do gear up usually just need like in my best gear so these are not best gear levels um but yeah uh, this one i could just ore it into something i could ore it i only have one ore one epic ore uh, but i could use like a legendary ore on it but i don't really want to do that and I don't really want to get rid of it. It's kind of weird. So it's kind of just going to stay there. This one, similar idea. I could ore it. Hope for a triple speed. Uh, triple speed. I don't have too many triple speed helmets on my account. So if I get a triple speed here, triple speed here, it's still going to be usable. Uh, here we got a double speed. Um, almost max with the max glyph on it. I mean, this one I definitely keep because it has the max investment on it, I think. This one is a five-star triple speed no glyphs on it it's still keep because it is um in 18 in 18 is a max double uh but you guys can see the five star compared to six star how much of a difference it can be this one is an 18 with the triple this one's a 17 with the double so that's why um at this point i don't really have too much five star gear so this one unfortunately there's no speed on this i think i'm only keeping this because the rolls on this are so strong it has a 20% on the crit rate. The max on the crit rate is uh, 7, 7, 7. So it's a 21. And then it has a max crit damage. And it has really good uh, HP rolls on it as well. I mean, the HP is not a big deal. But I could or this and hope for a triple speed from this shield. So it is a candidate for that as well. As it is right now, it's not going to get used too often. But the rolls on it are quite good. So I'm just going to hold on to it. I'm still kind of like favoring like mythical gear uh, a little bit because we don't have too much of it. Uh, this one is not 16 yet. Uh, it's already uh, has basically a double roll into speed. This one, the max is 18. So 16 is kind of average-ish. Uh, the substats are not particularly good, but it's not 16 yet. If it hits 16 and this rolls up to uh, 22, it's not bad, right? It's not bad. It's usable as a speed piece. Uh, this one, definitely not very good. It has the resistance with one single roll on speed. Other stats are not very good. This one could be, actually be gone. This one is okay, actually. It has a lot of HP. Single roll. I would say this one's probably better than the rare, uh, the legendary. Uh, this one has the double accuracy. Accuracy. So if you're hitting accuracy on this set, it's not particularly good because if you want accuracy, you're going for perception gear. That's kind of like the idea when you're cleansing. When you're cleansing, you want stats that complement the set that you're in. So knowing what your set is doing uh, is probably the first step in realizing what is a good piece of gear for this set. So like I said, for the speed set, you want speed as your priority. If you have good complementary stats, substats, then it might be worth keeping. For example, um, for example, something like this, right? You have the crit rate, crit damage uh, with a percentage stat, which, you know, it could be good for HP-based damage dealers, for example, because you have damage stats. So you basically have a full damage stat package with speed. So these are all complementary stats, right? 
um if you're going for like a support type uh piece something like this kind of makes sense too you have defense accuracy speed you have all complementary supporting stats which means this is actually a good piece the problem is it didn't roll good for this set right it didn't roll good for the speed set but that's kind of like the idea i want to put into your head on how to evaluate pieces of gear you want to make sure you know what your set is doing what you what you want your set to do basically and then you need to know what stats complement each other okay so let's move on so for example this glove this is probably one of the best rolled gloves i have on my account it has a double crit rate with the speed and a stat percentage and then a flat stat that correlates to that stat percentage so for an hp based nuker this glove is actually like pretty pretty nice but the but the problem is it's in the speed set so if you're building a nuker you probably don't want to build using a speed set you want a cruel set as as your two piece for example uh, but if you're building like a fast nuker then maybe this this glove's going to come in clutch right um so i'm not getting rid of this glove just because yeah it's in you know it has all relevant stats in a good set that probably will get used eventually definitely a keep uh, moving on so we got this one defense uh, percentage glove so for defense percentage you're actually not going to use it too often the only defense percentage um, pieces that you will probably use is a defense percentage chest or defense percentage boot but in a damage uh, set ideally because you don't use defense percentage for most um, champions uh, especially for pve uh, for, sorry pvp so in pvp the favored uh, percentage is hp percentage so uh, for support champions you want maximum hp uh, not so much defense um, but of course defense percentage is going to be better than like attack percentage or flat attack or accuracy for most supports but you don't really need defense percentage uh, very often so on a glove especially you prefer hp percentage so a defense percentage glove it's probably not going to see so much action so much love uh it is a triple resist i don't have too many like resistance pieces you never know when this might be useful it doesn't have speed so it's actually not particularly strong um, but it is a candidate to be ored so if i needed a triple speed glove i could or this hope for triple speed and then it could be made into something um with that being said, I do have a couple rare pieces here. So with the bottom pieces, so here, here's another tip. These bottom pieces, you need to be a little less harsh on because the odds of them rolling good is pretty, is, is hard, right? It's not as easy as rolling the weapon, helm, and shield because the weapon, helm, and shield have preset main stats. So what I mean by that, is that this attack 170 or sorry this attack 265 on a six star six star piece of gear is always constant it's always going to be attack on the weapon the helm is always going to be hp the helm's always going to be hp and the shield will always be defense okay so the top row, the weapon, helm, and shield will always roll those always. So that's one less thing to worry about when you're getting this piece of gear. But if you're getting the bottom row piece of gear, glove, chest, or boots, they can roll totally random, right? They can roll totally random. It ranges between, I think, like nine substats that you can roll. And I think boots, you can roll up to boots, you have speed. Mm, boots you have speed i think it's like nine or ten nine or ten substats i have to look it up but you have basically um you have to roll the main stat and then you have the substats to worry about so the bottom row is actually more difficult to get a usable piece so with that being said you want to be a little bit more flexible with what you're keeping um and of course based on your account if you don't have much you're going to keep you know your range of keeping things will be much wider you'll be keeping some subpar subpar pieces for example like for example i have this piece it's an hp percentage glove which is a really good support stat and it has speed on it so i'm like okay i can use this on you know whatever champion that i want to put a speed set on it's not a big 
not a big thing, right? Um, for example, I still have this glove. It's a 50% with, you know, one hit in speed. It's very weak, to be honest. But it's kind of like a, a glove that can just fit on any generic nuker, uh, any generic support champion, and then that's it. Don't have to worry too much about it. But I don't feel comfortable, like, deleting all this gear because I'm just not going to get it back that quickly. I don't invest uh, as much energy as I did before in looking for gear. So that's another thing, too. So what I meant at the beginning of the video is you have to know your account progress, right? So I've only actually gone through this speed set, and I'll try to explain to you guys all different uh, ways of evaluating gear and what pieces of gear you want to keep yourself um, but you also need to evaluate your account and where you are in the game so if you're in your account and you're still progressing through something like faction wars for example so if you're in faction wars you're building up all sorts of stuff right you're, bu you're building up champions at level 50 to try to get through content and faction wars whatever whatever so you're going to be putting all sorts of garbage on your gear on your on your level 50 champion so like if you like for example look at my apothecary he has like some garbage 12 star uh, you know rolled up gear you know i i was using grave chill at one point some garbage gear on her you know just like stuff like this like look at the best she has some like random gear on her but if you're still going through faction wars for example you're gonna need a wide assortment of gear unless you have uh, unless you plan to um Unless you're like pushing faction wars, then you're going to be putting your best gear on your best champions and then trying to push. But after you're pushing, you need some gear to f on your teams so that you can actually farm faction wars without swapping gear all the time. So you got to keep stuff like that in mind. Also, you got to make sure you keep your own playtime in mind. So for myself personally, I said to myself, hey, I'm not going to spend so much energy farming, you know, gear um, for whatever. For whatever reason because farming gear is kind of a waste of energy sometimes because most of your best gear is crafted nowadays and all your energy goes into uh fixing your crafts like with sand devil and shogun that's kind of like the end game strategy right now so i don't want to get rid of some of these pieces that uh i might not get again to be honest because i just don't farm enough now uh, at least i don't farm enough of this set the speed set in particular so i want to hold on to some of these pieces so that's kind of what I meant by your own progress in the game. You kind of know what you want to keep yourself and what you want to do with it. Um, like there's obviously clearly some bad pieces that you shouldn't be keeping. And that's kind of just free silver for yourself, right? Um, so hopefully those points in this video were kind of clear. Um, I don't want to go through like every single set because it's going to take forever. And I don't think um, it's going to provide too much value to you guys. But if you want me to gloss over this real quick, uh, I'll do that right now. So for crit rate, you're looking for damage, damage pieces. Damage pieces are basically like, for example, I'll take this one. This is like a perfect piece. The rolls are not super good, but there is basically a perfect piece. You got the stat percentage here, so it's going to be attack-based nuker. Uh, crit damage, crit rate, speed. Perfect piece, right? Just not the best rolls. Um, but so this is a damage piece, damage set. Perfect. That's what you're looking for. Okay, guys, so accuracy, you're looking for support stats. Usually these go on support champions, so you're looking for HP percentage, speed. Obviously, you're looking for accuracy, so any piece without accuracy is probably an instant sell unless you get like quad speed or quad something really nice. So, for example, like this piece is probably going to be gone, right? But it actually has some really good stats for a defense-based damage dealer. Just an example. Um, so probably reason why I'm, I'm still holding on to it and it's in a good set too so if you have a defense based damage dealer with the need for some accuracy it might be useful right uh resistance generally pretty bad you're looking for speed and resistance because it's going to go on a support champion this one has speed so i'm going to take a shot at rolling a quad this one has speed so i'm going to take a shot at rolling a quad it also has resistance too which is actually pretty good so this is actually a pretty good glove um but generally this set's not going to be very good so like this boot for example is just total garbage right so i should probably get rid of it but it's my only resistance boot so i'm just going to hold on to it and it's only a two piece so you never know when you might actually want to complete it like the glove and the boot for example lifesteal lifesteal is kind of interesting because it's kind of like you could have a damage you could have damage stats you could have support stats either way is kind of okay but this set is not used too often so you don't want too many pieces overall so that's why i don't have too many pieces of um of lifesteal for example 
fury fury is a set also that you just don't use very often you notice that i kept a four piece set here i try to do that with some of these niche sets that nobody uses but may be useful eventually one day on one champion in one build so i'm going to try my best to have a complete set possible um but yeah i it's you know these are one of those things that you might never ever use right like this one has a uh, max triple speed so maybe i'll use that on something this one has a quad crit uh crit rate you know with crit damage and attack percentage i mean it's pretty good um so you know there's gotta be other reasons to hold on to them as well but i try to hold on to a full set if possible days never used this set before i don't know like look at this i got a triple crit rate so there's a i got a damage weapon piece on day set like this is only useful as an off piece and then this one i have hp percentage which is a support main stat and then i have triple crit rate on it which doesn't make sense at all so technically both of these set pieces could be sold and i don't have a four piece set anyways um so just kind of things like this like i said like you gotta make sure you know what you're doing with uh what what you want to do with the set right so curse you probably want support set support stats um so you want speed accuracy for example but i'm rolling some pretty good like kind of like damage damage pieces so i'm holding on to it i also don't have too many pieces of curse set and the curse set is very good for hydra so i haven't really full geared my hydra stuff so i want to hold on to all my curse pieces just in case i can make some make some cool builds out of it frost set not really a set that i use almost ever so i don't have too many pieces of them notice how they're like basically like legendary or above uh, rarity frenzy same deal I'm trying to keep a four piece set um but these are like legendary and above uh, if i can help it regen regen's a very very versatile set um i know people don't like damage sets on regen but i do keep some damage sets uh you know regen obviously hp percentage is the best stat you want on it you want speed um you want you know you other support stats resistance accuracy um and then i do have some damage pieces here like you can make it work for for um, just giving some damage to some damage dealers that you want to survive like for example like centranos you can gear a damage dealer in regen and then have them deal some damage as well with some stats but that's just me i'm just holding on to extra pieces um here immunity immunity has been power crept quite a bit first it was power crept by untouchable from doom tower and then you had stone skin so immunity is just something you don't use anymore um, I try to keep like exceptional pieces. Mainly, you're looking for speed, accuracy, resistance. Uh, there are like you could gear like a damage dealer immunity set champion. That was possible back in the day, but nowadays, yeah, you probably don't need damage sets on your immune in your immunity set. So like, look at this one. This one uh, you got double speed, crit rate, and then uh, attack percentage. Here. It's a good glove. It's a good glove, but uh, yeah, immunity set. Shield set, power crept by bolster. Good thing they actually work together. So if you have bolster on the team with a champion with the shield set, basically both shields combine together, which is kind of nice. Um, so otherwise, not going to be used uh, super useful. You do use them with uh, seer teams. So you put one champion with a shield set, and then the seer can rip off the shield for a bunch of uh, extra damage. So that's kind of useful. But you're looking for speed. Um, you know support stat speed hp percentage accuracy resistance uh defense percentage uh relentless i have tons of relentless mainly they're not super good i have damage uh damage pieces i have support pieces just a great set especially for hydra so definitely keep uh whatever pieces you have here be flexible you don't get these very often of course uh savage set obviously damage dealing set you don't want any uh, you don't want like HP percentage gloves, for example. You want damage dealing sets. You want, you know, speed. You want speed boots. You want, or you want damage percentage boots. Um, you want damage percentage um, chess accuracy percentage. Uh, sorry, accuracy here might be useful for something like Wukong. Um, maybe it really depends, right? So I do keep like one or two accuracy chess, but you're not looking for like a resistance chess, for example. Uh, destroy max HP. Uh, it's a little bit of an interesting set. I think usually you would probably go for either support. You could go for either support or damage. I don't have many pieces here, but I do have some usable set. 
for support so i do keep this around it was pretty useful for like faction wars and stuff um helping me uh, beat uh, night revenants uh, back in the day and it was good it's good against scarab for example if you guys don't have blood shield accessories so definitely something to hold on to if you guys are still progressing there stun set very good uh big thing is speed um and usually support uh based stats so you usually put this on support champions so uh definitely speed and support stats hp percentage uh or accuracy toxic set i don't have much of this i don't really use this too often the only one champion i use this on i think is maybe Eris in my clan boss team um maybe or maybe it was seeker one of the two but mainly this is like a clan boss set um so and for that i use uh obviously speed um accuracy and then but then you can also do a damage build too so in toxic set but yeah it is you can use this on some solo things like i think udk with toxic set can solo a bunch of normal dungeons and then I remember I saw Pythion in a toxic set solo Sand Devil in Centrano City. So, I mean, it's possible. Provoke set, very good for Hydra. That's pretty much why it exists right now, I think. Um, speed and accuracy, you're looking for support-based stats mostly. I do have a Mishinaki in Provoke, and he's in full damage, which is kind of like cool. Um, but I wouldn't say that damage uh, stats are really needed for Provoke gear retaliation mostly useless it's a two-piece set now which is kind of cool which makes it more useful um personally i haven't found too much use for it um but yeah i think i've seen some people use this in arena actually it makes it a little bit interesting but personally i don't use it myself i just try to keep exceptional pieces in damage gear um avenging same thing it's going to be damage gear um but of course, I'm going to keep like pretty strong pieces here. Don't particularly have uh, other reasons to use this. Um, I mean, it was buffed recently, so it's not too bad. Then, yeah, it's not too bad when receiving debuffs. Yeah, it's not it's not good enough. Retaliation is definitely better than, uh, than avenging. Stalwart, you're probably looking for um, support stats, so damage stats are not going to be so good on this guy. Um, so yeah, speed's very important, of course. I used this in Clan Boss back in the day. Reflex, very good for Hydra. Uh, lots of areas, actually. Fire Knight and uh, Hydra. Um, damage builds. Damage builds work well. Um, Geomancer can use this for Hydra um, to uh, increase how many times he places HP burn. So this is going to be useful there. Um, yeah, I mean, you could use high uh, support or damage on... Uh, on reflex cruel mostly useless what am i keeping here for cruel look at this look at this damage weapon look at that probably no good this one got triple crit rate i mean probably no good <laughs> this glove wow this glove look at this glove guys curing glove triple crit rate max triple crit rate guys max come on anyways so yeah cruel is just trash uh sorry <laughs> curing is just trash Cruel, uh, you're looking for damage stats, of course. Um, you know, yeah. I don't know why I have this. Sometimes these little guys sneak in here. Um, this one, I mean, I don't even want to take a roll on these. Five-star weapons just can't catch up. Because of the amount of stats that you're giving up from just losing the uh, base attack, it's just you can't really catch up can't really catch up but like for helmet and shield having a five star is not too bad but the weapon you already lose base attack it kind of sucks so you gotta be exceptional exceptional rules uh for immortal you're looking for support stats speed hp percentage of course uh divine offense you're looking for damage crit rate you're looking for damage divine life you're looking for support Divine speed, you're looking for support and speed mainly. So speed, at least have speed substats here. Speed substat, double hit speed, double hit speed. So these are good, right? I want at least double hit speed to make these like viable. That's a max, that's good. This one has a triple, so it has a chance to roll uh, to get ord. Ord into a triple and a double here so basically like the good thing about this set is that it provides you with a shield right and the extra shield is actually an extra buff that seer can rip off so in some situations this might be needed um it's also good for like some applications like um 
uh, like Scarab King. Scarab King, you start you your champion starts off with a shield, so Scarab King can't really uh, do his thing against you, right? So for some, these are just upgraded shield sets. There's no real negative to having the shield um, applied, but uh, yeah, it's much harder to get better rolls on these pieces. Um, so you have to be a little bit more flexible. Swift Parry is an interesting set. You definitely can have support pieces and damage pieces. Um, I mean, you know, this one's like a pure support piece. It's not a particularly good piece. And then this one also is a support piece, double resistance, double accuracy with speed. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't have too many of them. I keep the ones that have good overall stats, uh, but I don't really use Swift Parry as well. And then I haven't really crafted all my materials. So if I ever needed Swift Parry, I can just craft a whole bunch and then see what I want, what I want to build. Deflection, I mean, it's going to be a support based set. You're not going to get too many of these pieces. Um, and the use cases, I can't even think of what you would use this for right now. In the past, you were using it for like Bommel and stuff, but now I don't really think uh, that gets used. So here, uh, res resilience, you're looking for support stats, so speed, HP, defense, accuracy, resistance. Um, I keep some exceptional pieces, like you can use this as an off piece, speed, really good triple damage roll here, uh, triple crit rate with speed here triple speed here so i try to keep the exceptional pieces for this but because it's a craftable um, piece you're gonna get tons of these i don't keep too many of them try to keep the uh exceptional pieces perception you're gonna have tons of this gear it's gonna be some of your most used gear and for perception you mostly want support uh pieces but you can actually use some damage pieces as well um so you have some some flexibility in what kind of pieces you want to keep but because you get so many of these pieces you want to be a little bit strict on what you end up keeping so for example this one this mythical piece good you know triple speed speed is going to be the most important you want speed and you want accuracy on the piece because there's an accuracy set and that's what you're going for right you want accuracy ideally this one not particularly good has accuracy a triple crit rate here this one triple crit rate with the speed not particularly good to be honest uh this one similarly no speed this one's probably just gone similar to the other one i don't really want to look at this anymore uh <clears throat> this one has the one hit in speed has good supporting damage stats this one triple accuracy looks good this one's triple crit rate um this one has supporting stats not super good not super strong rolls uh, but it is 16. I could just dump it right now. It has a big uh, accuracy roll on it as well. I'm just going to hold on to it just because of the glyph investment. This one has good damage supporting stats. No speed, no accuracy. Could be gone to be honest. But maybe it's a piece for a uh, like a tier, I don't know, tier F damage dealer down the line. But yeah, you guys get the gist here. Um, like I said, be more flexible on the bottom half. The gloves, the chest, the boots. Um, obviously any accuracy chest with speed is high priority even resistance chest resistance chest could work for somebody like mithrala or champions that require resistance plus accuracy like a mischief tank for hydra for example can be useful there if any breaker i don't really use it for anything i just i don't know what i keep here double speed crit rate like these both these pieces are just point like pointless for me to keep but because i have none of it maybe i should keep it and because we don't get a lot of it maybe i start building out a four piece set untouchable you know one step down from stone skin one step up from immunity i have some pieces i couldn't really never really used it to its full extent but you're looking for support stats for this one mostly but damage stats could also work too um, because the untouchable damage either could work fatal you're looking for damage stats uh, damage stats do i have damage stats here i do not particularly good sets. I don't really focus on this set at all. Frostbite, you're looking for support stats, so speed, accuracy. So I'm going to try my best to keep some of those pieces. Bloodthirst, similar to Lifesteal. It's a little bit of power creep. Um, to me, not really interest, not really um, needed set. I'm just going to keep the best rolls I have, trying to make a four-piece set. But honestly, I wouldn't be too sad if I just sold most, like all of these pieces, to be honest. Guardian is going to be a support base set. You really want HP percentage. You really want speed. 
Otherwise, the piece is not going to be very good. This piece is actually pretty good. You got a quad HP percentage here with the speed and a flat HP as well. It's a pretty good piece. Um, fortitude, you got resistance. So you're looking for speed and resistance. What do we got here? We got resistance, double accuracy. This is actually a pretty good boot for this set. And then this one, we got HP percentage and re resistance, which is pretty good. It's a two piece, so I don't mind keeping two pieces here just for the heck of it. Lethal, it's going to be all damage, damage stats that you want from this. Um, protection, interesting set. I had a hard time kind of evaluating this set in the beginning, but uh, right now for me, it's 100% speed. If it doesn't have speed, it's probably not going to get used and it's probably just going to instantly get turfed. So that's the main thing I'm looking for, speed. And you could even run it with damage stats, um, but it's going to be mainly um, support stats. So... Definitely looking for speed, definitely looking for support stats. This one is definitely junk, so off it goes. I think the mythical border enticed me. This one definitely can go too. Again, the mythical border enticed me to keep it. This one, no speed, has the double roll and resistance. Yeah, again, no good. Definitely can go. So just an example, right? You definitely want speed on these guys. Um, yeah. So that's protection. Stone skin, similar idea of here, right? Because you can have stone skin damage dealers and you can have stone skin support champions. So you want a mix of both. You want damage stats. You want support stats. The big thing is to have the stats complement each other on the piece. Okay. So for example, this is a damage stat or damage piece of gear, right? You got the attack percentage and then the crit rate, crit damage. It's not a good piece. Not a great piece, right? You got low rolls here. Not a great piece. Uh, this one, you got a full like support substat here. You got speed, accuracy, HP, and then this really bad double roll um, attack percentage. That makes this piece not so good. Uh, but we're going to hold on to it for now. This one, similarly, didn't roll super good. Uh, did hit the resistance here, but it's not going to be a very good piece. Probably just something we're just going to turf. I don't think the 16 roll is going to save it in any way. This one, similarly, is not going to roll very good. It rolled double flat here. Just not good enough. But yeah, you guys get the idea, right? Um, so support, damage stats, uh, very useful on stone skin. I have a lot of them. Look at how much, look how much stone skin I have. It's probably the most used set, I would say, for me. Um, I mean, obviously, Savage Lethal are very important, but... Uh, kill stroke. I don't have too much of this. I don't really buy this from the shop either. Definitely could. I have the gold, but I don't really buy this. Uh, the damage is basically an upgraded crit damage set. It's okay. It's okay. Um, but yeah, definitely have to invest kind of heavily into these pieces uh, to, to start getting some good pieces from them. Need to be in a pretty high clan to get a chance at these as well. Bolster. Um, as a free to play, you're just not going to get too many bolster pieces not going to get too many opportunities so i keep all sorts of bolster pieces some of these are instant sells for a lot of people right like this one is an like instant sell should be instant sells for a lot of people like this one doesn't make any sense but a lot of them i haven't ored yet so there is opportunity for them to get better this one is ored already so it was actually quad crit rate and then i rolled it into quad crit rate again but then the subs got a little bit better so it actually kind of is you know this one's a lot better um this one doesn't have speed, but it actually rolled all defensive. But obviously, your range of keeping this set is going to be quite large. Um, you know, just because you don't have too many of these pieces. Defiant, same thing. Uh, you want um, kind of like support champion stats, but you're not going to get too many pieces. You're going to keep most of them. Impulse, um, you're probably going to want support stats to give your support a chance to get the random skill back. For this to work on a damage dealer, it wouldn't work because it's a four-piece set and your damage dealers want, you know, savage or lethal. So this probably wouldn't go on a support base uh, champion. It's definitely going to go, sorry, it's not going to, it's not going to go on a damage base the, a champion. It's going to go on a support base champion. That's what I meant. Sorry. Uh, zeal. Zeal, I think is, mar is positioned to be on damage dealers, but I think the conditional uh upside of this doesn't really make up for the ignore defense that like savage or or um lethal have against it so zeal is not 
used right now and it's obviously very hard to get from live arena and so forth um, so but you want damage dealing stats on this if possible righteous is basically just a speed set so you want speed same same stats as speed set supersonic as far as i'm concerned supersonic to me is just a speed set you want it on fast champions so you're looking for probably support support based stats on this i'm keeping most of the gear even though some of it is kind of bad just because it's a very limited set you're not going to get too much of it merciless merciless is going to be a damage dealing set so you want definitely damage dealing stats on it uh, and yeah that's it all right guys so the video is going on pretty long uh, i'm going to make some quick comments about the accessory pool um hopefully you guys will uh, find it useful but i don't want to take up too much of your time so basically for accessories the main thing you want to look for is amulets attack and these are the ones that you can basically get rid of because you don't really use attack amulets almost ever um but as you can clearly see all my attack based amulets are special sets so for example they can be ored into something else so i will hold on to them uh for now but if you have any normal attack based amulets you can just sell those usually there's only certain uh, champions that use them mainly bomb champions so if you have a bomb damage dealer then consider what faction they're in maybe hold one amulet for them for example in regards to what you guys can do for a quick uh, accessory cleanse, look into what you guys are using the most. So for me, the piece that gets used the second least is actually defense-based amulets. So defense-based amulets, most people prefer to run uh, HP-based uh, HP gear on their support champions, especially for PvP. For PvE, you can have like kind of a mix of HP and defense, but even so, you don't need too much defense. So defense-based amulets get used very seldomly because HP-based amulets are just better. Um, the only reason you would use a defense-based amulet is because the defense-based amulet may be rolled, you know, triple accuracy, for example, and you have a debuffer that needs accuracy. Um, a damage dealer, a defense based damage dealer would never use a defense amulet. And like I said, most supports would use, would rather use HP instead of defense. So go through your defense based amulets and look for exceptional rolls only. For example, something like this, double accuracy can be used, right? Exceptional rolls or special sets probably should be kept. But anything else that is not an exceptional roll, so this is why I'm keeping this one, it has a double accuracy roll here. Um, probably can be turfed relatively um, you know carefree right the other thing that you guys should look out for is resistance <clears throat> banners resistance banners don't get used very often at all there's only very few champions in this game require resistance or you build them in resistance um, it's going to be roster dependent and what you're going to do with that champion for example, if you're doing some solo content, let's say you have, um, let's say you have Artak, you want to gear him up for some solo content. He's an orc, so make sure you guys have at least one or two resistance banners for him available. This is a really good resistance banner, just because some of these solo champions do require you to build them with resistance and accuracy in order for them to be able to solo content. So, however some factions have no need for resistance banners at all they don't need any champions built in resistance or at least currently there's no viable builds for them or no viable champions that require resistance however i do recommend that you keep at least one good or all the good examples that you have for example if you have a triple speed resistance banner you're obviously not going to get rid of it for example this one another thing to look out for is if you have resistance and you roll something like triple attack on it or more attack on it um, then that's not something that you want because resistance will usually go on a support champion so you want support stats on your resistance banners so anything that doesn't roll um, support stats on your resistance banner you can probably turf pretty carefree about that so anyways, that's just going to be a really quick um, sifting through of your uh, your accessories. Obviously, you can deep dive a lot more into them. 
uh, mainly the big thing is when you're sifting through your accessories is that you basically get rid of comparable ones but slightly worse ones because that's kind of what you're going to end up with is like oh i have a bunch of uh, rings that have the same stats but they're all kind of slightly different so basically at that point is you have to ask yourself why am i keeping three rings that have the same stats in my stash so you can probably comfortably get rid of at least one and if you want get rid of two and only keep one example of that ring for example uh the best version of it um but that's another thing you should ask yourself why am i keeping three pieces of this they're not being used when will i use them and if i use them i will just use the best example of them so get rid of the other ones if you really want to do that um, and i think that's a, a quick and dirty way of just dealing with uh, dealing with your accessories in terms of amulets they get a little bit tricky to uh, deal with but mainly um mainly the you want to keep hp based um amulets for support champions make sure they have accuracy or resistance rolls in each you don't want rolls in attack for example uh your crit damage amulets amulets should probably have hits into attack hp or defense and you don't really want hits into accuracy or resistance so obviously the support substats you want to stick with the support main stat and the damage main stat you want to have damage substats makes sense right guys okay anyways it's a bit of a long video i didn't really do any cleansing myself hopefully this helped you guys uh you know brainstorm some ideas on how you guys want to manage your um account um I mean, if you guys don't want to do that, then you guys can definitely hit up some of those cell files in RSL Helper. Um, but make sure you guys be careful what that file is uh, selling. You guys don't want them to sell something that you uh, don't want them to sell. Um, but yeah. Anyways, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have any additional tips or what you guys do uh, or what your strategy is for gear cleansing. Um, I know it's a kind of a deep topic and it's kind of boring and dry no one really likes to do this myself included so i understand uh it's a it's a tough topic to dive into but we all have to do it unfortunately so anyways guys thanks for watching appreciate your time and i'll see you guys in the next video